want to use baseball to help support a family and help make a living, and it's something I've always loved to do, but for me, it helps set a stage for you to do something more special in the world. You never know who you're going to run into later in life, and that one time you meet someone, it could be the only time they meet you, so you want to leave a lasting impression. My dream is to be able to win as many championships on the field and affect as many people off the field in a good way as possible. And every day, that's all I think about, is just getting there and be able to have an impact in the city of New York. Since the moment Blake Rutherford could stand, the game of baseball was in his blood. Those closest to him quickly learned that he'd found a calling just a few short years into his life. Three years old, playing for the Texas Rangers, and I was the coach. I do remember sitting at the dining room table and getting a phone call from a coach at Simi Youth, and he said, we'd like Blake to play on our spring team. And I said, oh gosh, he would love that so much because he doesn't even want to leave the field, but he cannot. He's only three and a half. And they said, that's okay. He wants to play more than the kids I have on my team right now that are five and six. It was a lot of fun just seeing him and the enthusiasm and, and his passion. I mean, even at three years old, you could tell that, that you know, it was, a, it was something that he loved and loved, loved doing. So he's three, um, we're five and six year old, and he was out at every single practice, hitting, fielding, doing everything with all the older kids. He was swinging one of those big wiffle ball bats, and I said, wow, look at that kid. He uh, swung from the left side, and uh, he was just so natural. I don't remember it vividly, but I remember when I was four years old or five years old, my brother was playing, and I just remember going around the bases and sliding into each base, and my mom's like, Blake, it's time to go, and I was like, no, and I just kept sliding and rolling in the dirt. There were so many days where he was a, a pig pen, you know, like the dust balls just flying off him because he would just lay in the dirt and play in the dirt, and the dirtier the better. Uh, if, he, if he could have stayed out there 24 hours on that baseball field, I think he would have. Blake's childhood obsession consumed his life, but he still found room for another early love, and the two fit together perfectly. Well, it goes back as long as I can remember. We always had the Yankee uniforms. He, he always wore the number two. He picked Derek Jeter as his favorite player. Who could you think of as a better player than Derek Jeter to pick and to, to emulate? Of course, as parents, we were very enthusiastic about that because you need good role models, and there's no better, in our opinion. I love the Yankees. I just love what they're all about. But more importantly, I love the way Derek Jeter plays the game and the way he treats people on and off the field. He was Blake's idol, and uh, Blake, in many respects, patterned himself after after Jeter as much as he could. The Yankees would come to town if they were. Usually, it was down at Angel Stadium. We always made a trip. Uh, my son, Tommy, and Blake. They gave each other tickets to go to the Yankee game. It wasn't the Angel game. We went to the Yankee Stadium. It was after one of our Cooperstown trips, and um, I just remember it because it was such a beautiful stadium. Like the tradition, and just dreaming about one day playing on that field. As his teenage years approached, it was becoming apparent that Blake's rare skill set was something special. I met Blake, uh, I think he was in sixth or seventh grade, might have been fifth grade, and I was coaching his older brother Cole. I said he probably could play on our varsity team right now at sixth, seventh grade. Once Blake hit, I would say 12, 13 years old, you saw the separation from the other boys. You know, you could see it even in eighth grade, man, when he hit the when he hit the ball, it was different, man. It had a different trajectory. It was it was, you know, a lot faster than everybody else coming off the bat. There was a different level of, of talent and a different level of maturity to him than a lot of the other players. Just happened to, you know, stroll on the baseball field his freshman year and got to watch him play and it's kind of like, wow, like, that's not a 14-year-old right there. There's no way that kid's that good and only 14. It was at this time, before he had even played a single high school baseball game, that Blake Rutherford committed to UCLA at just 14 years old. Really a fantastic athlete, a guy that just got better and better. Obviously, as a sophomore, junior, and then we realized that it was going to be very difficult for us to hold on to.
I actually got to see him hit a ground ball that went through the middle against Pacifica. And the ball went all the way to the fence. And we're talking a ball that bounced in the infield, and he took it home to home. First day I met him, the very first pitch he sees, he hits the baseball off the top of the left field wall. Well, by the time I went to wheel him around, he had already passed the shortstop, and he was heading to me. And I'm like, OK, I'm, I'm used to kids being like a step or two away from the bag. Right then and there, I knew. I said, OK, that's the whole package. UCLA wasn't the only big name to take notice. Team USA also called, and the relationship would last through his entire high school career. Well, he was on the team three times, just playing at a different level and just growing up and, you know, seeing different parts of the world. And I mean, it was life changing. When he left here from high school as a freshman to go play for his first Team USA, I think he struggled like the first week or two, but once he figured out the speed, it got easier for him. Seeing how he competed in the USA and, and with the, the talented kids from around the, the country, I knew he, he had what it took. We're in a high level here in California, but playing at the competition that he did, playing against Japan and Cuba and some of the better programs throughout the world, that did it for him. I mean, just hearing the national anthem for the first time when you have USA crush a chest and you're in a place like Japan or Mexico, it was a real special thing. It's where I really learned to be a leader. To watch him at the international level, not just play well, but be the best player on, on the field is pretty impressive. And so Team USA gave him that opportunity to take his game to another level, especially the Major League Baseball level. Darren Dent, a longtime family friend, battled ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, for much of Blake's youth. Darren recently lost the fight, but his positivity and courage will forever embody the values that will direct Blake the rest of his life. I think both the boys actually took on a, a lot of inspiration from him. Both the boys have said to me, Mom, if he can be positive in that situation, then I can be positive. Anytime I think, oh, wow, Blake, that's a, that's a setback or you're facing some, some, some adversity, I just think about him. And the boys, you know, having met him and, and, and see him as, as an inspiration. His attitude and his mentality going through life with everything stacked against him, it drew Blake towards that. To have it as good as we have it and to be able to play a sport and him to be able to play it for a living, just a terrific role model for both of us. Perhaps it was the compassion learned from Darren's situation, but Blake developed a heart eager to pay it forward. During his high school years at Chaminade, he discovered the Simi Valley Challenger League, which provides special needs children and young adults the opportunity to play baseball in a safe and fun environment. My first time out there, I had a great time and I sat in the car and I was just in disbelief talking to my mom. I was like, I just don't get it. Like, how can these kids be so happy, so thankful, so energetic, and they've been given so many setbacks. He, he really understands that he's blessed and he looks around his community, looks around to people who are disadvantaged, who need help, and, and he reaches. You know, sometimes you just get those kids that come and they're just so in love with what they're doing and so in love with helping other people that it makes them feel so good about themselves and that was Blake. When I'm out here and I go 0 for 3 and I'm mad at myself or I don't want to talk to anyone and that just opened up a whole new branch to my life and just being thankful no matter what. You know it's just a really good feeling to know that your son goes out of his way to make those who are less fortunate feel, feel good about themselves and about life. He just could look at them and know that he could help them in just such a little way. It was so rewarding. It's just back to basics and of what's important in life. It makes it so refreshing that baseball can do this for so many people, regardless of their situation. It can change their life. To show that level of empathy, to show that level of understanding, to care about individuals to the degree that he does, that makes me very proud. Very proud. I, th I think he's an unbelievably special kid. It took more than rare natural talent to turn Blake Rutherford into a prep school superstar. A little brotherly love might have been the main ingredient. Ever since I was able to like walk and able to do sports, we've always been competitive. The boys compete all the time in everything. <laughs> the Rutherford brothers, 
<laughs> no matter what it was, whether we were playing pickup basketball or wiffle ball, it was always a competition. The video games, the ping pong, I mean, anything you can challenge one another on, they do. It's fun to watch. It's gone on for a great many years. I was finally able to hit some home runs, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to challenge them. So now they go out to see me, and they have a Thanksgiving Day, Turkey Day, home run derby. The first year we did it was just him and I. We just went out with our grandparents, came and watched. It kind of builds up to a crescendo up to the time when, when the actual uh, competition begins. That's actually the most nervous that I get to see Blake is when his older brother is kind of launching him up into the trees. Roy and I always go to watch because they're just so funny. It's the commentary, better than the hitting. You know, there's a little digging, there's a little, there's a little harassing going on and what have you, but it's all in, in, in good spirit. We've done that the last two years now. Blake will tell you he's 2-0. I think we're 1-1. One one. I did win again, but it was a lot closer, but it's just a real good time, and I'm sure it'll continue to grow as we get older. I think competition brings out the best in you, and, and, and certainly those two bring out the best in one another. Draft Day, the culmination of countless car trips and tournaments, goals and dreams, sacrifices and rewards. It all came down to this one day. I mean, I was nervous, I'm not gonna lie. There was a lot of anticipation and excitement. Everybody was cautiously optimistic. You know, it got a little tense because we weren't too sure what was happening and this was supposed to happen, that, that, that was supposed to happen. As it got closer and closer to the Yankees pick, I'm like, is this really going to happen right now? This is like dream come true type stuff. My advisors called and said, look, the Yankees are gonna take you. And I was like, are you serious? Like, this isn't happening right now. It was still disbelief that, you know, could it really happen? I mean, I looked around the whole game room. There's Derek Jeter, Alex Rodriguez, and I'm like, could this really be a reality? And so I went in the room with the rest of the family. And they go, what's happening? What's happening? All of a sudden, the group of boys that were here ran upstairs. They went to Blake's room. They took down all his Yankee signs. They ran back in here, and then sure enough, you know, it was announced. The New York Yankees select Blake. They announced it, and man, what a life changing experience. It was almost a dream, it didn't seem real. You know, you just kind of knew it was something that was meant to be. This is like divine intervention, man. It doesn't get any better than this. It was just total elation. There, everybody was jumping and screaming and just so happy for him because he, they knew what the Yankees meant to play. That is the team he's loved since he was so little, all of us. To me, it was karma. I mean, to be drafted by the New York Yankees and to see him as happy as he was made the moment. That was my dream always. I've always had a Yankee poster or a Yankee jersey hanging on my wall. And to be able to be drafted by the same team Derek Jeter was and be able to put on the pinstripes, it really couldn't have been a better fit for my family and for me to be able to be picked by the Yankees. Blake was happier than I've ever seen him in his life, so it was a perfect moment. My favorite player in baseball is Derek Jeter. Why? He's my favorite player because his off-field and on-the-field uh, it really influences, influences me because on the field he's a great leader and the captain of the New York Yankees and he just he respects everybody and he has the love for the game and off the field he donates a lot of money to charity and he doesn't do anything bad so he, that's why he's my favorite player. They say that good things happen to good people. Well, in the case of Blake Rutherford, this old phrase rings true more than ever. For him to be able to step on that field someday, maybe play at Yankee Stadium, would be the dream come true for him. Yeah, I think it'll really hit me when I see him out there on, on a, in a Yankee uniform on the field. It would be, it'll be a special moment for me. I don't see why he can't accomplish everything he's setting out to do. Those idols that he has of Derek Jeter and Mike Trout, looking at those types of people and following those footsteps, I think uh, they'll be destined for greatness as a professional athlete. I've been around this game a long time and coach a lot of guys that have played at the major league level and he's the best I've seen. I do see Blake. I see him in the big leagues in the next couple years. I'll always be his biggest fan. I've been with him through all the ups and downs and really know what he's gone through to get to this point so far and could not be a prouder, bigger brother.
Nobody knows how the story will end for any major league prospect, even one that was the best player on every field he ever stepped on, even one that was drafted 18th overall, even one that now wears the jersey bearing his favorite team's name. But one thing is for sure, Blake Rutherford has an army of loyal fans who will be joining him if his lifelong dream becomes reality. You can see more Yankees on Demand and scoreboard content by clicking here. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel right here.